All right. So it's been a long time, but we're back. <laughs> we're back with the Phoenix app. Um, that I can't even remember what it, what it, what what we built exactly. We built some auth system. And we deployed it. We happened to deploy it on a new droplet. Um, I deleted that droplet. It's been a long time already and I didn't want to pay for it. So I think we just have to redeploy and see if we can still do it. Um, because it has been such a long time that I don't even remember if this was all good. We're apparently already on Ubuntu 18. And I think our image is still on Ubuntu 16. So I think what we should do is we just we should just take Ubuntu 18.4. And then we should be good. Yo, the real Casey, thanks so much for the follow. Appreciate that. So, um, I think we use distillery, right, for deployments. Uh, distillery, yeah. So let's go to the documentation page of distillery, and let's read a bit upon what was happening again. So, I remember I was stuck for two days trying to deploy something because I didn't realize. There's guides here, and then it says here that you can just easily deploy and you can easily release using distillery and it will just hot reload, right? That's like um, Elixir's true power is like the, the fact that it could hot swap code, hot reload code, and it can, um, without downtime, deploy, right? Without having to do some crazy s stuff in Nginx and like boot up another version of your app and then Point, it, point all the traffic to the new version of your application and slowly basically take out the old one versus the new one. Um, Elixir as a language has built in that you can hot reload code and you can swap out code modules um, while you deploy. And so I remember last time I did this, we had a hard time because we built the app on Mac and then we tried to run it on Ubuntu and then that didn't work. So what I assumed was you build on Mac and it has all the binaries and everything with it. And then no matter where you where you build this, you can run it anywhere. But that's not the case. You have to build it on the platform that you're going to run it on. So what we did instead is we followed the building releases in Docker version instead. And so we created the Docker file with Ubuntu and everything set up. Honestly, don't really know why this is here, except for... Well, I don't know why this is here, but I know why these three things are here. Um, this one doesn't really matter, though. Sub mix up, uh, Sarah. How's it going? You code on Mac? Yeah, coding on Mac is amazing, man. It's really nice. Unless you're doing Windows stuff, then yeah, it's not so nice. Um, so pretty much I just copied this script as far as I remember. And I, as far as I can see, it's actually exactly like this. Oh, you use Kubuntu. What is Kubuntu? Or just Ubuntu and you made a typo. Um, and so I think we just copy this. It will just install uh, a, a bunch of like dependencies that are needed within this container. Uh, it installs Elixir and, and Erlang. And then we we can just run using this image, we can just run a build command. And so here you can see you use you use Docker build to build this Docker file. And then you can build a con use a container to basically build your application. So you have a we have a build script here. Uh, where did he save this? Oh, I'm in build. So here we have a build script that just basically takes the app name and it creates a tar file because um, we we compile this so we create this is basically what it does and then we I think we run this within the docker container yeah so here you can see um, docker run and then using the built image that we just built wait are they using elixir ubuntu why are we building a, making a docker file then the following command in the same directory as the docker file oh i think by default it takes the docker file okay fair enough that's okay that's okay ubuntu with some kde kde commu community programs oh, i didn't even know that existed what's up hemi how's it going nerd <laughs> yeah honestly i didn't know that it existed and so basically what we do here is we just build the docker image then 
inside the dock container, you you basically run Ubuntu. We build using Ubuntu. We we build the um, the application, and so we can copy it then on the server and run it there, uh, which is exactly what we're gonna do. So let's build the app. Let's first run the app because I haven't run it in a while. Uh, mix Phoenix server. I think that's what it is. Oh, I think we don't have Postgres running, are we? Uh, cannot compile dependency base 64 URL. Mix. Oh my god. Mix. Steps. Get, I think. Okay. Mix local dot hex. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm just whatever it tells me to do. Yeah, sure. Just do this. Whatever. Yep. Sure. Oh, okay. So mix is the package manager of Elixir, the language, which is very nice. This is what happens when you don't touch code. This this piece of code for a very long time. Mix steps clean, whatever you want to clean. No. Oh, okay. Let's do mix. Mix Phoenix dot start. Is this readable, everybody, or is this, uh, or should I make it a little bigger? I could make it a little bigger if you guys need. What's up, Jonas? How's it going? All right, mix Phoenix server. Let's see if that works. We're not compile the dependency. Blah blah blah. Okay. You can recompile this layer or update it using blah 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 or clean it. Yeah, let's clean it. Sure. We clean now. Mix steps get. I think maybe it built it was built for uh, Ubuntu. Okay. We're we're rebuilding the app. We're doing fine. Oh, something broke. Can we uh mix clean all depths? Mix clean all. Yes. Clean all the things. Clean all the things, and then we do a mix Phoenix, uh, mix depths get. So we basically do, for those of you that don't know, if you're coding, you're not use, you're not building everything from scratch. You're using other people's code and it's called packages. And you basically load other people's packages in order to, you know, be faster and people share packages, basically. Re, re, we reuse a lot of people's code all the time because we're lazy people. And we cannot just build the entire planet without the help of other people. Are we actually going to run this now? All right. What are the best things about Elixir as a programming language? That it's built on a fantastic engine. On a, It's built on top of a very good, sophisticated language that has proven itself for quite some time. Um, which is called Erlang, which by itself is not a very readable language, in my opinion. I don't like the syntax that much, but it has been around for a very long time <laughs> and it's proven itself quite a bit. Just to give you an example of a, of a company that uses Erlang, WhatsApp. Exactly. Sub Luna, how's it going? Sub Melody, how's it going? Syntax is weird, yeah. And so Elixir is just syntactic sugar over Erlang, which makes it more Ruby-like. So if you like Ruby, this is almost like Ruby, and I like Ruby. I'm a, I'm a fan. It's just a little slow. But it's a it's a functional language. It's a func functional language. Um, okay, yeah, of course. Our Postgres server is not running, and obviously, then our website doesn't run. But let's open it up in the browser, anyways. Hey, there we go. Beautiful. Oh, I need to open my, uh, my chat. 
to check what languages uses elixir what do you mean what wait stack share that io you mean like other people that use elixir what companies use elixir right Submobile, mobile how's it going where you're from your your name is like doesn't seem english misspell that i see i see can i check wait can i check erlang because i don't think elixir well elixir is getting some popularity but Roku, WhatsApp. Ericsson, well, that's what it's... This, they basically built the language, so it's not a surprise that they use it. I guess if it works. Well, the, the most important... The most important feature is that it was built for tele, uh, telecommunication, which means that uptime is like very important, right? At the time when it was built, which is it's already kind of, kind of an old language. Built in 26 days ago. <laughs> no, it was built 26 days ago. It was first it first appeared in 1986. So yeah, it's not a it's not a very new language, but it it the 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 principles that it was built upon are very good, and I'm actually surprised why it doesn't really take off. It might not be the, I think it's not the most like memory efficient language, and maybe that's why people are like holding out uh, holding off on it. Um. But it's, you know, it's better than Ruby, so <laughs> in terms of, I think in terms of memory, it's better than Ruby, but not entirely sure. Um, all right, so I need to pop out my chat here. I can use it in the browser so I can click on you guys' links if needed. Okay, so what we're going to do today is we're going to build, rebuild the app and do exactly what we did last time because I just forgot because it's been so long. Have you seen Crystal? I have seen Crystal. Um, it is... It is a very interesting project, to be honest. Because, you know, it's exactly what I hated about Ruby. But then it looks so much like Ruby. So it's like, wow. And type safety. Because it's compiled. Which is like... Fast. Nice and fast. Don't do everything on runtime. People hated when I first started coding in Ruby and I joined I did my internship at a company that was like pretty much fully on Ruby. They had a kind of a hatred towards like co compiling because they've been working. I think when you study back in the day, you know, when you did your computer science study, you were like in such crappy environments, I guess. Back in the day, waiting for the compiler to finish is not very fun. But nowadays, you know, it's helping you, first of all, a lot. And since the computers are getting faster and uh, um, dev tooling becomes, like, more, more efficient, I guess, like, it just helps you by so much. And now everybody just wants it because it makes both your code faster when you deploy it. It also just helps you out a fuck ton to not bring bugs in your app, so, you know. All my coding experience was some basic HTML and CSS stuff like four years ago. That's good, that's good. I mean, that's how I think we all started. At least that's how I started. MPHP, that's how I started. Um, okay, so we have this app, right? Okay, let's close off the dev tools and let's build it using the docker container that we have so let's first build the doc container exactly like it was described here because i'm just copy pasting right now because it's been too long so why not 
So let's build this. And I don't need to really put a tag on it. I can just... Whatever. Or a tag might be easy. Let's, let's call the, this, this image YOLO. I think that's a good idea. So let's build this. It takes the closest Docker file and it will run through it. So what is Docker, you might ask? Um, it's basically... Let me just simplify it by so much and people are going to hate me for that. It is basically... You describe in a file what the environment should look like, where you're going to run something. And so you you slam all these steps into a file and then you build an image off of it, which basically just tells you this is the environment that it needs to run into. And I can just spawn basically a bunch of instances off that image. So I can say, okay, I want this, in I want to run something in this environment. And I can run one uh, an application into it, or I can just run a command inside of it, or I can do something else. Um, which basically makes it easier to stop the problem of, hey, it works on my machine, but it doesn't work on your machine because everything runs in the same environment, right? So you give it, you slam a bunch of commands in, a, in, a, in an image. This is what your image is going to look like. And it, it it's not a virtual machine where it, it like, actually uses an entire operating system b booted up. Um, it kind of like half baked, bakes and uses a lot of its um, tools already with the current operating system. So I'm on Mac. Um, Mac has a bunch of, I think actually on Mac it runs in a, in a VM anyways. But if, you, if you're running an, a Docker container on Ubuntu, what it basically is, it uses some of the operating system that you already run on it uses some of its like uh of its stuff except for the for the environment specific things so like what do you install on it and everything but it uses the kernel um so that you don't like boot up an entire operating system by itself to run your environment into it's kind of more efficient in that way um and so you tell it this is the environment that you need to run into and you can you can always guarantee that it will run the exact same thing as long as you you know do it correctly you can still do a lot of stuff to break it but in theory if i if i create this image and i run a command it should pretty much guarantee to always give me kind of the same result if i were to run something that is not based on time or you know anything so if i build this image and i run echo hello world it will always echo the same hello world because it's always run in the same exact same environment and the cool thing is that you can share those images so you can build an image and you do all this building stuff and you just you just save the, that image somewhere and all you have to do is just download it and then run it which is very interesting so metallic how's it going you started with java for minecraft oh that's smart that's a good way of learning too yeah Makes a lot of sense. So many frameworks for JavaScript, I've lost track. That's fine. I'm a front-end dev, so I know you feel. Sometimes, at some point, you just have to say, yeah, this is what I'm going for. This is what I'm, uh, I'm diving into. But in the end, it's all the same, right? It's all the same. It's just another abstraction. As long as you know your fundamentals, you're good to go. What's up, Lars? How's it going? What's up, Earth? But I think starting off with Java is not a, like, not bad if you're, uh, what the fuck is this? Please select your geographic area in which you live. Okay, I've never seen that before in Ubuntu, but sure. I live in Europe. I live in system. <laughs> Yo. Oh, it's, it represents the time zone. Europe is not a time zone. Is this working? Did it actually did it actually take my standard in? S or not? I don't know if that actually works. Are we stuck? Are we stuck already? I don't know if it's doing anything. What are we playing? This is not what I'm what I signed up for. Okay. Rip Docker. Okay, so we were in the middle of building the thing. 
but so i think we're like we were probably here no uh here oh no we were built we were installing the locales yeah we're still installing the locales <laughs> yeah you live in system v nice i live in <laughs> etc oh yeah there is 13 etc no way oh that's beautiful i love that uh no usable dialogue like programs installed so dialogue based on front end cannot be used all right i think we can just stop this yikes press enter i already pressed enter you see the line break here okay what are we gonna do if this thing needs my standard in what are we gonna do i'm just gonna am i just gonna add oh god uh okay you know what let's remove this part from the <laughs> from the image and then just build it again and then i'll just run it manually within the command line oh it's probably this okay let's do that let's do that instead and then we'll see how far we get It's not exactly the principle of um <laughs> it's not exactly the principle of of um docker but you know we'll just deal with it shit dude all my regular streamers are offline what's up alexi how's it going goddamn programming streamers I'm sitting here trying to boot up and beat the beast mod pack. Hey, okay, let's go. So, okay, the reason why this might not have worked is because maybe some commands have changed because we're working with Ubuntu 18 now instead of 16. And this this example script right here is 16. So not surprised that not everything works, but that's okay. I think even if we were to build this in 16, I think it would still work, but you know, I just wanted to have, give myself a headache while building this, you know? What's up, Kasha? How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? My CPU is not happy with me. I think the beast, man. Shouldn't be too bad. Okay, in the meantime... We can spin up a, a droplet and see how that goes. Um, let me think. I can't remember which one it was. I remember last time we added the wrong one. Should I just add all of them? Should I just add all the SSH keys? We want to enable IP... Sure, man. <laughs> Whatever. Um, yeah, let's just use all of them. All right, host name. It is Jizra Cat's Elixir. You know they're out there, don't you? Sure. Let's boot it up. Boot it up, big boy! All right, here we go. Easy peasy, boys. If you guys want to have a droplet, I have a beautiful link for you. Want to use the official Elixir Docker file? Because that's a little overkill, I think. I think, actually. I don't know. I think there's too much shit in the Elixir Docker file. Because I'm not running it inside Docker on, on the server. Ubuntu is larger. Oh, that's... Is it? Doesn't this Elixir Docker file just use Ubuntu under the hood? Hey, 
Hey, show me your file. Can I see the file somewhere? The actual file? Please go with Alpine. Ah, whatever. I don't really care too much. I just have to build it. Conversion to check the file. Version. Oh, here? Oh, yeah. It uses Erlang. Okay, what does Erlang use? Build pack. Yeah, who knows what's in there? But yeah, we could have done that. But we're just following the tutorial. While we're doing this, I mean, we have time because this thing is building, so we've got time. We've got time to do some digging. Okay, which one was it using? It's stretch or something? Stretch. Stretch. Old stable. <laughs> it's from stretch SCM. All right. Stretch SCM, boys. Where's that? Stretch SCM. Old stable SCM. Stretch curl. God damn it. It's just depending on itself every time. Debian. Stretch. The same shit, man. Pretty much. All the same thing. Hey, why is my channel loading? What the heck? Oh, now it is. Right, can you repost that link? Or just test. Okay, we're in. Why was my channel loaded? Okay. Is my Docker container, is my app up? It is up and running, boys. All right, let's SSH into it. What is my username, though? Okay, let's try that out. SSH, probably root. Probably your boy root. Yes. Get me in, beam me up, Scotty. Oh, we're into the server, let's go. Yeah, boy. Free server, boys. You guys all know the IP. <laughs> well, shit. <laughs> this this server is not gonna last very long. I'm afraid. But that's okay. That's how things work here. That's why. You, that's what happens when you de when you deploy live on stream. Don't do that, kids. Also, I have all my credentials hard coded. If you guys want to see. It's been a while since we've touched this this thing, but. I want to show you guys all my hardcoded credentials in this, uh... Because we just wanted to get it done. And so, when I'm actually going to deploy this, it's going to look a little different. But look at this. That's, uh, yeah. I think that's the cookie secret. And also, we have... Oh, what is this? Is this the same? I think we had more. I think we had more stuff that is like... Uh, oh no, this is add authentications. I don't know, I thought we had more more secrets, but... Oh, I think I showed the secrets, because the secrets are in the, env the environment files. So here. Prod secrets, dude. Ooh, spoopy. Ooh, crazy. You guys have already seen that, so I can show you. Oh no, oh shit, spoopy, ah. Fuck, we have to set up the server, we gotta be quick. No shit, we gotta install all the dependencies on the server now. Shit. Bam. Bam, we gotta deploy. Uh, yeah, 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 is this? Oh, he's gonna deploy it on digital ocean with the, with the docker container. I think. Sick, bro. Docker swarm. God damn. Maybe we should do, maybe we should do this. Maybe we should do this. All right, let's check Doku out. 
the smallest what is this pass what is what is pass again platform as a service um powered by docker you can install docker on any hardware use it on inexpensive cloud providers use the extra cash to buy a pony or feed kittens you'll save tens of dollars a year on your dog photo sharing website like your own heroku oh do i need this <laughs> Probably not. No, I don't think so. Maybe I've had multiple apps, it would be nice. Well, I have multiple apps now. But... Yeah, it's kind of wor worth looking into. I think it's kind of cool. While we're, uh... We're waiting for our boy to compile. Okay, we gotta install shit quick, boys. Yo, Nigel, thanks so much for the host. How was your stream? Should we want to deploy without Docker? Or maybe we want to do it because we've already done this. Yo, Mo Mobile, thanks so much for the follow. Yo, if you guys haven't checked out Nigel, please go check him out. How was your stream, bro? Um, How to create a one-click app droplet. We'll be using Docker Compose in conjunction with Docker Swarm. And to do so, we need to make some adjustment to the Docker Compose file we'll be creating with Worker with Docker. Ooh. So if we are deploying this within a Docker container, you can see that they're using like the Elixir build and then they set up everything. I think eventually, I think we should be using this. But then I need to wait. I need a place that we can store the images. Because I'm already using Docker registry, but because I can only have one private one. That is kind of a problem, isn't it? Yo, Jack, thanks so much for the... F what the fuck? I just, like, went into fucking complete mental mode. Jack, welcome! <laughs> thanks for the follow! <laughs> what the fuck? How's it going, man? How's life? Um. Look at that, installing yarn and shit. Yarn installing, yarn deploy. Look at that, look at that. I just want to do it manually because we've we've done it last time and I've completely forgot how it works. So, let's build a release. If this goddamn Docker image is done. Oh no, we gotta fucking type it in again. Let's do 11. Enter, enter. Shit, man. What is this? Why is this setting up TZ data? Oh, shit. Oh, why is it? It just knows that I don't have access to, like, some SCDN. I don't have any way to standard in into the Docker container, I think. Oh, wait, let me Google that. SCDN Docker image build. Uh, can I like, no, it's not a container yet, so, the fuck? Uh, okay, hold up, hold up, hold up. Why does it... Uh, I don't understand. Geographic area. Uh, Ubuntu. Ubuntu. Docker. Build. Avoid user interaction. Yes, thank you. God. Run DPKG. Without interactive dialogue. Oh, see. This is what we needed to do. All right, let's 
Did I just... What? Okay, let's turn this back on. And then we just add an extra argument here. Baby in front of non-interactive. Let's go. Stop this. Madness. Let's go all the way from the start again. <laughs> let's build that beast. Okay, so while we're doing that, let's install a bunch of stuff on our actual machine. I can't remember what we built last time, though. Do uh, Elixir deploy. Deployment. Yeah, I just want to do it the hardcore way. I need to install a bunch of stuff. I need to install Postgres, first of all. Bet I know. What's up, stupid gladiator? How's it going? I like that name. That's funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Build and deploy on the same... Oh, perfect. Yeah, that's... Totally. I just need the Ubuntu setup. Ubuntu Elixir. I can't type. Elixir. Thought a title. Had to jump in. Oh, God. Don't judge. I'm just doing some random bullshit. Okay, yes. Sure, let's update the system even though we just installed it. Do it, boy. Look at this, we're like hackers now. <laughs> it looks like we're hacking away the planet. Let's go. Hack away, boy. Red stuff, that's fine. Red stuff is good. When you're in hacker, red stuff is good. Or let's do exactly what it says right here. With pseudo and everything. <laughs> Don't you just need to install Docker and that's it? Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm not running Docker on the server. What I'm doing is I, if I build an Elixir release, it needs to build for the environment that it needs to run in, which is Ubuntu. But because I'm running it on a Mac, you know, we need to build it in a container. And so that's why we're running Ubuntu here. So, we could also just immediately go into Docker way, because that's exactly what we're gonna be doing. But I wanna just, I wanted to just remember what I did last time by doing it again. That's like how stupid I am. Alright, Elixir, Erlang is running, so that's perfect. And now we just need to install Elixir. So this container is gonna be removed later on, but I just wanted to see it work. Even though we already had it working before, I just wanted to see it again. Elixir is working, bro. Perfect. Wait, I don't... Wait, it's Elixir 1.9. Do I have 1.... Ooh. Okay. No, I think it's fine. I think it's fine because we're building it in a container and I think it's also using the latest one. Oh god, what am I doing? If you have... If you, we, uh, we need to install the hex packet manager. Okay. Oh, that's not what I copied. Back from getting a sip. Well, I had to redo it. Because, you know. All right, we have hex now. Oh, we need to install Node.js as well. Sure, let's install Node.js. Yeah, man, let's do it. Wait, I just installed NVM. Oh, we need to run this. Close and reopen your terminal. Yeah, how about... Or run the following command. Look at that. NVM. Big boy! Alright, we can install the version that we want. Which, which one is the latest one? Oh, wait, it just says that. NVM LS remote. Look at us being hackers, boys. Keep hacking, lads. All right, we're going for LTS. NVM install this boy, big boy. All right, we're installing Node. Not sure if we need it, but if I release, I think I will just get all the dependencies installed anyways, but okay. We just run this, but let's do it again. And then we install Postgres. 
And then we just go with the default password so you guys can all log into my database. You need it for Phoenix? Really? What does Phoenix use it for in, in, in production mode? Because it's just for asset building, right? You can now start your database server using blah, 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 blah. Okay. Yes. Hey, we're in. Look at that. We have one user or two, three, actually. Beautiful. Password. Change the password for Postgres. The user. Two. What? Oh, we we're supposed to be in. Okay. Let's change the password for Postgres to Postgres. I think my default is Postgres. Oh, it's done. Hell yeah. Okay, so now we can copy pasta the other command. This is the best. This is the best thing for you guys. We can copy pasta this command. But then we have to replace Ubuntu Elixir because that's boring. We have to replace it with YOLO. I don't think latest matters, but latest, sure. Build the app, boy! It's gonna fail. I remember last time it failed some somewhere. So it's gonna fail. Doing something. Alright. That's good. Alright, Postgres is still the password. Beautiful. Let's queue. Restart the service. Are you guys in my database yet? There's a warning. Yeah, that's just because... Phoenix. It's old version of Phoenix. What is iNotify tools? File system watcher that Phoenix used for live code. We don't... Do we need this? Maybe we do, actually. We'll see. We'll see if we need this. We're just gonna ru rush into it and then we'll figure it out. What's my IP? Hey, don't don't log into my database. Don't do that. Yeah, I am the ultimate hacker man. Boom boom. It is really cool though. How this how you deploy things with Elixir is pretty sick. Fairly sure it's it's local host. This is compile stream boys! Compile stream, let's go! We DevOps now, boys. Um. Oh, because he's actually building it on a fresh Ubuntu machine. Which is why. But I don't even think we need Node.js, but you know, I don't really care too much. Let's figure it out. All right. Using Volter tutorial for Digital Ocean, yeah. Wait, actually, is, isn't Volt, Volt, Volter also like a cloud provider? Yeah. <laughs> what the heck? No, this is actually... Oh, yeah, this is not Ubuntu specific, but we're going to run this on Ubuntu, yeah. <laughs> That's too funny. Oh. If you want to support uh, only 1.7 plus... Yeah, whatever, I don't care. Build it already! Yo, Casey, I'm enjoying this. The constant use of boys is going to get me using it. And this be the reason my wife murders me in my sleep. Good times. <laughs> hey, I'm happy for you, man. That's exactly what you should do. Oh, release already exists. Sure, man, let's release it again. What's up, Cozy? How's it going? Cozy always knows when I do programming streams. Release! I forgot to delete all the releases. What, what does it say about the assets? <clears throat> Building the release. Make steps. Only prod. Mix prod compile. NPM run deploy. Prefix. Assets. Hey everyone! Get 
Yo, Do Jo Do G What the hell? How do you even pronounce that name? How can you even log in with that name? Jo Jo Do Jo Jo Is it just Jo Do? That's actually pretty easy. <laughs> Oops. <clears throat> I think the old version of Phoenix uses brunch, but I think the new one actually uses webpack. Yeah, we're that fancy now. Oh yeah. Wait, when will you play Minecraft with us? Never. Minecraft's dead, man. It's back alive though, but it's kind of dead still. Are we building yet? Look at that prod. Look at all this. We building, boys. Oh, we have it. Let's go. Yeah, come on. All right. Copy stat no directory found. Okay, so. Oh, are you kidding me? So we build this, but the container is off now. Docker PSA. Where's my YOLO? Eight months ago. God damn it. Oh no, that was the image. No, we built the image already. Okay, whatever. So apparently, wait, what was in this command? Uh, Debs get do clean, compile, release, all that stuff. And then it says copy to rel artifacts. Rel artifacts. It's right here. What are you talking about? What do you mean? There's no path. Oh, there's no path for. Cannot copy build prop blah 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 blah. God damn it. Releases. Israel cats. Releases. 0 0.1 tar. Yeah, this is when I locally release. I need the tar. Why did it not copy it? God damn it. I hate deployment. Same. We all do. I'm too stubborn to actually do it correctly. I just wanted to do it the old fashioned way. And then obviously it goes wrong. Underscore build prod blah 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 blah. Oh, don't exit. How about we do that? How about we just don't exit? Let's do this again. Do it again! Run it! So as you can see, I don't have to recompile the image because the image is already built. So all I need to do is just do exactly what it did before and then just do it again. Yes. How about that? Let that sink in. What's up, Pure Bunny? How's it going? If you guys haven't checked Pure Bunny out, please go check her out. Fantastic streamer. It's kind of weird, but we all are, I guess. Minecraft's dead. It's not dead, but you know, it's not really. Um. Oh, sorry, Chodo. I didn't even. <laughs> I was just too, like, hooked up with your name that I forgot to answer your question. Your an Your question was, "Hello, how long you program in Elixir?" I don't. In fact, I just don't do that. I'm really bad. Hey, anyone knows WordPress Elementor? No. WordPress in 2K19? Anyone? <laughs> no, it's fine. I think I actually recently used WordPress. My mom needs a website. If what do you fall back on? You always go, oh, God damn it. It just fails. Or right, how about... How about I just copy this myself? We're gonna be fine. How does it actually have the app name? Oh, here. We're good. Okay, let's try this again. I don't know why it's not working, but you know, we can we can roll with this. Yumla. Yumla, dude. Yumla is the shit. What's up, Joshua? Um, it 
it's even called Jizzbergat's community server. Come on now. Hey, let's go. Yeah, I will we'll help you guys get some, some people in. Oh, wait a minute. This is my file. Variable type is unused. If the variable is not meant to be used, prefix it with an underscore. Oops. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, the release already exists. Blah, blah. Yep, yep. Runtime configuration releases that ex exs does not is not found. Elixir are bad on Windows. <laughs> not on Windows, you silly. You silly goose. We are on Mac. No, on Ubuntu now. And on we are on Windows, bro. <gasps> oh god damn it! I need to run. Shit. What the fuck? This is supposed to be here, and then I can copy it. The rel artifacts. Oh, wait, this doesn't work, right? Does it? Wait, hold up. Let me just read. Build the container and then exits. Yeah. So I build it inside the container and then I have to copy it back out, right? That's what I have to do. Once we're back in the command prompt, you should be able to see the produced release tar tall 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 ball. Tall tar ball cheese. Tar ball. Void. There's only blah in there. I think blah is not it. We didn't call it blah. I think, did we? No, it's supposed to be app names. It's supposed to be just our cats. We've done this before. Why doesn't it why does it not work anymore? So we're inside the container. How do you even copy it back out? It doesn't make any sense. Or do we run it outside? I don't know. Run. Run. This. Opt build. Yeah, this is inside the container. How does it... How did it even work before? How did this file ever work? I don't get it. God damn it. All right, you know what? You know what? Let's do it manually. Fuck it. All right, let's do it. Let's run it. Let's run this this goddamn big boy. Run it. Interactive and tag. Tag is called YOLO dot. Go. Do we need dots? No. Bash. What is that thing? Oh, I don't need to do anything. Do I need to run it or just start it? Docker start. It. Ah, fuck it. Docker run. IT. Uh, YOLO and then bin bash. That's what it is, right? This fuckerino. Yeah, let's run bash. Let's do it manually all together. We're now in a container. And now we run this goddamn shitty build script. Where are we? What? CD into this. Create off build artifacts. No fucking follow direction. How does how does it what? How did it what? Okay, so somehow, when I run the other command, what? Oh, it, it created a volume! Void. Void. It created a volume. That's why. This is volume. Alright, docker volume. Alright, let me explain you guys a little bit about that. That makes a lot of sense. Volume. So these are three fields separated by column characters. Volume. How do you use it? 
Basically what a volume is, it basically mounts something to your host machine and inside the container. So to use the same thing. And basically what I said here is create a volume for the current path and map it to the build folder. Which is our work directory. So we're we're mounting exactly what we have there to there. And then Don't we only need to mount? Oh no, we don't have the entire app. So that's why it was working. And then yeah, it's supposed to be able to copy it inside the actual outside. Uh, 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 when I read this, so inside here, let me at last that big boy. Let me at last also this. What is this? So confused, chat. What? Where is this quote right here? This is not what I need. Wait, so confused, boys. This is what it was. Oh my god. I'm so confuzzled, bro. Make sure your river is marked as executable. Yes. I think I've done that. I think I can just run bin build. Yeah. Inside the actual outside. Yeah, come on. Guys, think with me here. How is this not working? Because it's supposed to run mound the post current folder which is my this exact elixir project into build then remove it afterwards we can remove that actually then we're all good don't remove yourself you little shit all right now we're gonna have the container dead somewhere saved into nothing list and then we can just copy it from there kind of weird but that's whatever kind of weird i don't even know how it was working before but it was working so it's whatever i don't really care too much okay so uh yeah let's wait this is actually all we need to do and then we need to copy the release onto the server and then we just bomb the shit out of it boot it up and then we're gonna make a code change and then we're gonna redeploy again a new release and it's gonna hot swap the code and it's gonna be awesome i'm telling you you guys are gonna be excited as much as much as i am excited you guys are gonna be excited but before we're gonna do that i'm gonna grab myself a little drink we're back Oh boy, I sure am. See? Joshua is excited. Wait, it worked. But it didn't copy. What? Right. Oh no no no, I didn't save the file. So what it was actually doing is was was not copying. But that's okay. We still got the Docker container, so... Where is my boy? Here. Docker latest. Bam. Docker 
Um, exec. It. Ah, fuck. Docker run. Not find image. No, I want to run command inside stopped Docker container. Is that to start it again? I think. Wait for it. Docker. No, 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 no. Because if I do Docker run YOLO, it will it will start a new from the image. But the thing is, it created the file inside the container. But if I do Docker CP, I can actually copy it. Watch me go, chat. Hold my bear. Hold my bear. Watch me go. Watch me go. Docker CP. Wait for it. Docker CP. I googled this before, and what do you get? Is you get a warning about child porn. It's fucking weird. Like, actually, Google is actually weird on this. If you Google Docker CP in the Netherlands, you get a warning for child protection about, like, child pornography or something like that. I'm just Googling my boy Docker copy, man. Come on. CP is a normal command. Captain Planet. Yeah, I'm now on the list because I googled do Docker CP. Okay, my container to source blah blah blah. Okay, so if I do container slash opt build. Oh god, there's no autocomplete. And then whatever the frick this thing is. Yeah, this is what we're going to copy to the target, which is going to be desktop. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's copy this. Oh, I don't know the app name. Uh, shit. Yeah, it doesn't have access to those variables, obviously. So let's do just our cats. I think that's what it's called, right? Yeah. Zero cats. App VSN. Oh no. Releases 0 0.01. 0 0.01. App name .tar. Zero cats. 0. 01.tar.gz Copy a bitch. <gasps> I think we did it. Oh, Please don't let there be any like random files. Okay. It's not there. Wait, what the fuck did I... Where did I copy it to? Yeah, I'm supposed to copy it to my desktop. No, no container path. Op, blah, 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 blah. What are you talking about? God damn it. Start. This buckaroo right here. <gasps> okay, now I can do a ducker exec, exec IT big boy. Bin bash. Oh, <gasps> we're in. Hell yeah, we're in, we're in, we're in. Look at this. We're in. Rel. Build. CD. Build. We can run the command manually. Do we know app name still? Let's get the app name. Hell yeah. Copy, big boy. Yeah, see, so let me see. Build, prod, rel, Cats releases 0 0.001. Oh, it didn't create a tar file. 
Uh, release. Mix release. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Oh my god, we're so stupid. Why didn't you guys tell me this? <laughs> I can't even remember what, I, what I'm supposed to do. I think it's supposed to be building this, but it's building dev. Why is it building dev, though? You guys like my cookie? Grin, easy. What's up, D Danny? How's it going? Uh, shit. How do we supply the thing again? This thing. Mix and fraud, blah, blah, blah. Oh, is that what we're supposed to do? Hold up. No, this is starting it. This is deploy. Mix and fraud, digest, blah, blah, blah. Craps, shit, fuck. This is what we're supposed to do. What? I don't even know what I'm doing, chat. What am I doing? What are we even... What am I even doing? Okay, so release is supposed to do... Mix release. What? What is mix release? I don't even know what is going on anymore. Mix release. What is that? Oh, that's just distillery. No, that's distillery. Yeah. What the heck? So I'm supposed to do this. Because the mix and by default is dev. That's what I forgot to do. No, I have set the mix and to prod, huh? What is going on? What are we developing? I'm just not even developing right now. I'm still devopsing. Why am I always devopsing on stream? I keep doing that to myself. Okay, let's mix release again. Okay. We're inside the container, so let's do it again. YOLO! Mix already exists. No, don't do that. Okay, let's delete the, the release then. Whatever. Mix, delete, release. <laughs> it's probably not a mix command, but... Delete, release, elixir. No fucking way. Don't tell me... Don't tell me they changed it in 1.9. Don't you fucking dare to tell me that. 1.9. Oh god. Oh god. Okay, when was my... <laughs> when was the last time I streamed? Mart, May. That's like a month ago. No, it's two months ago. I can't compute. Two months ago. And in the meantime, they upgraded a minor version. Oh no. Wait, what version of distillery are we using? Oh no! We've been only a m two months! Oh, we're already on 2.0. What? What has happened? Mix prod, mix release. A release will be simple, blah, 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 blah. Instant release will be money. Uh, app files are entry point. Uh, uh. It supports multiple commands such as bin app, blah, 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 blah. This is out of the box or what? Oh, God. Okay, you know what we're going to do? We've done this last time, too. That's the stupid part. But then we did it for another reason. We are going to create another app. <laughs> See, we already have normal Elixir app right there. We're going to make a new one. Oh, God. Elixir new. Yes. We're going to make key value storage. Makes new. Bob Ross. That's what this is gonna be. Oh shit. It's supposed to be Bob Ross. 
underscores Bob Ross. Okay, we're now we now have a what did I D E. We're going into Bob Ross now. Oh, that sounds very wrong. Let's not say that. We're not going inside Bob Ross. Calm down, chat. Okay, we have a project here, and now we're gonna do mix Everyone, release. Yo, Chug Chug X, thank you so much. Mix env equals prod, and then we're just gonna release. I don't even know what this does. Mixtape could not be found. But it was just really oh we're no we're, oh shit we're not on the elixir version okay so i know i know a fix for this what we're gonna do is we're gonna be running <laughs> in the docker container again <laughs> that's funny because it's docker that's not funny at all okay what we're gonna do is we're gonna do docker run it yolo bin bash think about that let that sink in for a second so we have a new container, new container, let's go. Uh, but we don't have a volume, so this is not gonna work. Exit, now we gotta kill that container again. Docker around this, go low. Docker, uh, shit, we wanna volume that shit. Not CP, this, no, 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 this one. And then we don't wanna run this, we wanna run bin bash. Yes, we're in. Okay, so we now have access to this exact path right here. What's up, Gower Cuff? How's it going? Yeah, we're Bob Rossing away, boy. You know it. Okay, so now we're in. And now we're going to do mix release. Mix release. With mix and equals prod. What does that do? So now we have it. We have it running. Now I've created a release. A prod release of an application that does not do anything. <laughs> That's great. Awesome. That's great. Wow. Okay. Beautiful. Wow. We released something. Cool. Okay. So how do we deploy this then? What's next? You leave me in the dark, bro. What is the purpose of the application? It's Bob Ross, bro. It says it right there. I don't understand. Oh, extensive documentation on releases. <gasps> Here we go. This is very difficult. Okay, so just because Elixir updated a minor version, we now broke releases. That's why I think the command changed from just mix release to distillery release. So if we actually want to release it, we can just run this instead. Wow, we're so smart. But not all their documentation is updated, I think, because this is still running. Oh no, it's mixed this area release. Boy, why didn't you just copy pasta whatever they posted in here? God damn it. Okay, so, okay. Okay, we can do that. Let's just run this. <laughs> Let's copy pasta this. If I just copy pasta this entire goddamn foul i would have been chilling right now i would have been on the beach chilling hard sipping away my dungon beer i would be gucci all right let's build it again distillery release that shit deploy it on prod get it live slap it onto digital ocean get that going slap another release on top of that ship it live hot reloading live on stream see it here first okay we wasted about one and a half hours here, but that's fine. See, this is what we had to do the entire time. That's why we releases. That's why I thought the releases. Okay, so in the meantime, let's read about the new release then, because then why do I have distillery still? Okay, so once a release is assembled, it can be packaged and deployed to to a target. As long as the target runs in the same operating system distribution and version of as the machine is running the mix release command that's why we use the docker image a release can be configured in your mix.exes file under the releases key in your dev project you can specify multiple releases where the key is the release name and the value is the keyword list 
with the release configuration. Releasing a certain name is done with blah 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 blah. Release demo. If the given name does not exist, an error is raised. Thank you. Yo, Molly, thanks so much for the raid. Appreciate it, bro. How was your stream? Running the release. The problem is, it's not a... I don't want to copy an, an entire folder. Oh, well, maybe I do, actually. I don't really care too much. Okay. Yeah, we could have also used this. We can also try and deploy with this. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. If this is all it takes, what do I do with a new version then? Didn't do much. And then want it. And then wanted some Apex? Hey, let's go, dude. Yo, if you guys haven't checked out my boy Maui out, please go check him out. Um, Self-contained. A release does not require the source code to be included in your product in your production artifacts. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. How do I multiple releases? You can send releases. Blah, blah, blah. Management scripts. Release come with start, restart, connect remotely execute rpc calls run as daemon run as windows servers and more now it's more too think about that chat there's a release in it too oh god release in it breath release in it we British now deployments sure sure cool cool yep yep Cool, cool. Very cool. Very cool. Yep. Uh. Yep. Sure. Yep. 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 And then you just start it. That's cool. That's cool. Yo, I like that. That's that's nice. Release. Hold up. There's a couple of ways to guarantee that a release is is built on a host with the same properties as the target. A sample option is to fetch the source, compile the code, and, re and assemble the release on the target itself. Yeah, that would be stupid. If you prefer, you can compile the release to a separate directory. No, I don't want to do that. I want to do it locally. I want to actually just build it like CI. I want to... See, I had to build my shit and then just shove it onto the server. And then we Gucci. <sighs> Even though I don't have a CI. That would be the most the most reliable thing, right? Let's see, I run all the things, build my app, shove it onto some registry, get it back down, slam it onto the server, boot it up, hot reload that shit, and we're good to go. How does one, when it's already running, how do I deploy a new version then? Okay, in the meantime, this thing is already done. What do you mean? What do you mean? This doesn't exist. Oh my god, wait. Do we have a lock file or something? Mix lock. God damn it. Alright, what distillery version? What the fur? Mix depths up upgrade. Is that a thing? Oh, don't tell me you're gonna upgrade everything. Okay. Update, yeah, update. That's of course what I was talking about. Distillery. Update that shit, boy. Yeah, this one uh, this made a big bump. Okay, let's try this again. Run your shit while I'm reading while I'm reading my shit. Okay, so. Um, maybe Phoenix has something in their documentation. Okay, do this. 
export your secrets. Dependencies only prod. Compile that shit. Application assets. Start your server. Putting it all together. That is not what I want to do. Learn Phoenix. Production deployment. Look at this. Distillery. Wow. Wow. Okay, what happened? Could not reload the release config. What? Oh my lord. Okay, let's go back to master. Which is two months ago. Oh goodness gracious me. That moment. Oh god. Alright, get rid of everything here. Kill it! Discard all the changes. Discard it all! Get rid of all this, these beam files bullshit. Alright. Fresh start. Mix. Depths get. Upgrade that shit. Upgrade distillery. Oh, we don't have distillery on this one. God damn it. Okay, let's do it all the way. Oh, no. Okay, you know what? Um, release native. Boom, we're gonna release native. We're gonna release using the documentation that they give us on, mi on Mix itself. Not this story. We're gonna release the native way. Elixir 9, baby. Let's do this. Hell yeah. Slam it on there. Okay, so... What is Minix release in it, then? Generate the sample files for releases. Yes, do this. We need to ex install the latest version of Elixir first. God damn it. Xenf, probably. Uh, install versions. Yeah, I need to upgrade update this. Fuck. Install. What is the latest version? 1.9.0. Install that shit! Install! Elixir 1.9! Oh god. This just went from like an awesome, I'm gonna deploy in no time, to oopsie whoopsie. Elixir just upgraded, and I'm too lazy to make sh to version everything on my server, so I'm just gonna version it instead on my client, which is gonna take five times longer because apparently distillery broke because they now have native releases. Oops. Which is good. I think it makes sense. You can now natively release. It just, it just make it a little harder because everything changed. Yo, Plunge One, thank you so much for follow. I hope that's what it is. It sounds like very Dutch. Tell me about it. <sighs> Delicious. Okay. Alright, we have Elixir 1.9 now. But we're still in 1.8. NVM. Oh no. X A N V X E N V Global 1.9.0 Elixir is now 1.9 baby let's go cool okay we have that version now now we can do this cool init command init it, bruv yay release init oh beautiful bam styles generated I don't even know what they do but they're generated Mix. Run. Mix. Uh, release in it. I don't even know if I need this, but I'm doing it anyways. Beautiful. Okay, that's cool. Sample files for releases. Yep, that's what I needed. Holy. Where were those generated again? They were released in rel. 
All right. Uh, rel. Environment bat. Environment sh. Environment arcs. Totally. Yeah, this is what I needed. Thanks for this. Okay, so next, we're just gonna run this. And then it's gonna say, ah. It's not gonna say, ah. Ooh. All right, so inside my mix EXS, there's a project def do here. And then now there is a key called releases that you can specify your release. And then it says something, something, something about let's do this and something about this. Holy. And if this doesn't exist, then yep. Cool. Okay. So, yep. It already exists. Sure. Make sure to just rebuild it again. Cool. Cool. Awesome. So this is build, and now if I start it, will it work? Okay, we're in the matrix now. Stop! Oh. What is the error? I cannot even read it. Okay. The beam file was compiled for a later version of the runtime system than 21. To fix this, please, please recompile this module with a 21 compiler. Yeah, totally. Totally. I'm dead ass trying to get Minecraft running for the last one and a half hours. Hey, that's my life, dude. I'm trying to get this thing to run. Uh, what is my... Erlang version then. I don't know what Erlang is again. What is how do you run Erlang? Erlang version. Uh Hello? How do I check my version? There you go. ERL. 21. Please recompile this module with a 21 compiler. Okay, so maybe I have to just remove the release. Kill the entire underscore build folder later. And then just, you know, build it again or something. Oh. All right, mix depths clean. Oh, that's why it's, it was old dependencies, right? Oh no, oh. Clean all the things. This is gonna break because we don't have the dependencies. Depths get. So normally you only get the normal ones, but I'm getting all of them because I'm a lazy person. And then you do mix release. Release that bad boy, release it. Let's go. Look at all the errors and the warnings and everything. I'm gonna die. Oh God. Ooh. Uh. That's, this is fine. This is fine. It's all okay. It is actually better like this. The bony stack has a gun. It's completely fine when there's warnings. Warnings are good. Warnings show to the world. It says the Elixir version is 1.9, 1.4. Oof. Okay, let's see if it works now, though. Port environment variable is not set. All right, we can fix that. Is it gonna run? Is it gonna run? Please run. Please run. 
Is it already running or what? Is it not saying anything? Local host 3001. That's not running. What the heck? So something is running, but it's not really running. Hmm. So it did build something. But it's not really running. Port 3000. Yeah. Okay, that's not really working. I like this. That is okay. I mean, it's not bad that it's not working, but I think it's bad. Phoenix deployment. Let's read about this. Where is the release? Where is the release? Blah, 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 ecto migrate, blah, 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 yep, 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 port mix, mix and fraud, do we have to do that? Mix. Mix and fraud, I don't think it matters because it's already pre-compiled in production mode. It just doesn't really show anything. Alright, elixir 1.9. You will need Elixir 1.9. Okay, if you're not familiar with release it, blah, blah, blah. Any secret? Oh, we need a your Oh. Okay. Yeah, so, okay. Does it need more stuff? Why does it not show any errors then? Or does it do? This is the error dump. Build. Releases. 0 0.1. Cool. Do I have any logs or something? I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing, chat, but I'm figuring it out. Continuing, read the excellent docs. Okay. Yeah, I've read this. I've seen this. I've been here. I've, uh, I've, I've, I've been in this position. Yeah, I think I know. I understand what I'm doing here. I know how to enter. See, people have been like... People get prod, prod depths only, but that, I don't really care too much about that. And it creates a release. That's exactly what we did. Yep. That's all good. That's fine. And then we need to... We just need to configure, I think. Yeah, let's, let's do this first. Uh, I don't really know what it's, where it's running, but let's figure it out. I guess it's just localhost. And then Phoenix, is it like Postgres, Postgres or something? I don't know what this password is of this thing, to be honest. It just works. What are my local settings for for database dev postgres postgres okay let's try and do that postgres postgres local host what was that slash database oh the database name this one no not dev a uh, prod Yeah, you guys can see my secrets. That's fine. Oh, okay. It, it's already in here, so it doesn't even need the secrets because it's all hard-coded right now. Because <laughs> I'm using an old version of Phoenix. 
and we just wanted to get it working. So even though I create this export, it doesn't really matter because it's not really used. Mix, compile. Why does it need to compile? The release does that already. Okay, compile the assets, sure. Digest, sure. Whatever. Think of all the open tabs you have. Hey, don't hate. Oh, well, if you do so, your application should start, but you will notice that the web server does not actually run. That's because you will need to tell Phoenix to start the web servers. Let's see. Open your prod config secrets.exs and you should find a section about using releases with a configuration to set. Go ahead and uncomment that line or manually add the line below. Oh. Huh. All right, let's try that. Oh. This is just what it is. Okay. Does it need a comma? Uh, th yeah, it does, I think. Okay, server true. And then when I build, and we're good, I think. Release that shit! Let's go! Yeah, sure, we'll overwrite that shit, whatever. Oh, that's so fast, though. That's like way faster than the other one. I need to set a port. Oops. Sorry, port 3000. Damn it. Localhost 3000. <gasps> it's working! It's working! Okay. This is always satisfying to see. Nice. Okay, that's only working locally though. But. Okay, and now? How do we get this release on a server? I guess you just copy the files and then we should be good to go. Right? Okay, let's go back to the deployment here. Oh, wow, it's working now. Woo, let's go. Ecto migrations. Another common need in production systems is to execute custom commands required to set up production environment. One of such is precisely migrating the database. Since we don't have a mix, we don't have mix, a build tool inside releases, we are, which are a production artifact, we need to bring set commands directly into the release. A recommendation is to create a new file in your application, such as lib my re uh, app release, with the following. Where you can replace the first two lines by your application names. Now you can assemble a new release with mixed release, and you can invoke any code, including the functions in the library above, by calling the eval command. The Blinken, how's it going? Thanks so much for the follow. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Elixir releases work well with container technologies such as Docker. The idea is that you assemble the release inside a Docker container, then build the image based on the release artifacts. Uh... Yeah, that makes sense. But I don't want to do that yet. I first want to do it manually. So let's do that manually first. Yeah. Let's create this this thing. Copy pasta this so we can run the migrations on the server. Uh, lib. Cats. 
release on EX. It's fine that you guys see my secrets because they're not going to stay, obviously, because that's just not very secure. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay, let's build this into the release. And then I'm just gonna I'm just gonna copy the entire file over and then see what's gonna happen. Alright, re-release. Yes. Oh no, we need to re release it inside the Docker container. Docker run IT. Oh no, we need to create a volume. Docker run this one. YOLO bin build. No, I'm not gonna build it again. Oh, actually, we can build it. No, we can't. Because we removed that command. Um. Wait, so what did we do with the assets then? So we digest, we create a Phoenix digest and we deploy with the prefix slash assets. And then within the release, it has those assets. Wow. Okay. Let's see. Let's just try it out. Whatever, man. I don't really care too much. Um, let's run this. And then we're gonna do mix, mix, uh, mix. Mm. Let's actually still create that bin file. Probably easier. Bum, 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 bum. Let's steal it from here. Exactly what they do, but then just a little different. Um, bam, 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 bam. yeah so this doesn't really work anymore so this is then mix release with mix and fraud and then we don't copy this we already have the copy command so actually we don't really need to do anything Because it's already in build. So in theory, we don't really need to do anything. We can just mix release. But let's do all this stuff that's before here. Just copy this out. Container permission denied. Oh, we need to do... Chown. Is that what it is? Chown or something? Chown? I uh, can't remember. C mod. Ah, whatever. Same thing. Okay. Build this fucking goddamn app for me. Did we change this to release? Yeah. Release it, big boy. All right. We just went from doing a whole a whole episode of on doing it just deploying, and then we're doing it exactly again, but then not using distillery anymore. <laughs> That's dumb as hell. Love it. God damn it, there's a fly in my drink. Damn flies. Always wanting the sweets. Alright, 
All right. Compile those dependencies, boy. I think the reason why it does clean is because we're now building the or compiling the asset, the, the dependencies for the environment that you're in. So because we're running it inside Docker, it's running this inside of in Ubuntu instead of on Mac. So there's three flies constantly harassing me, but I'm too lazy to slay them. Kill him, dude. Do it. Compiling lib ecto repo queryable. It's taken more than 15 seconds. <laughs> Instead of telling me that it could potentially take 15 seconds, it now tells me that it is. Even though it isn't. All right, generating the app. Let's go. Let's go. Now it's running. Yes. Overwrite. Do it. Features with no purpose. Not entirely true. It's food for a lot of things. Releases.exs not found. Okay, there we go. And so now we should have compiled this bad boy right here. And then I go home and I listen to them alone. What is this song? Is this a song? Sub Luna, how's it going? What is it with you rock and rollers? You can perform for Is this a song? And... Oh, it is a song. Up Scar, Scarnet, Scarnet. Hello, Ramen ad Addict. High five, girl. High five. If you guys haven't checked Luna out, please go check her out. Cute grill. Looking for viewers. Okay, we're doing things. Everyone, get Yo, Scarnet. Our goddamn don't go and follow, man. Thank you. Girl, cute girl looking for e boy to play games with. Mm -mm. We barely played, Luna. Which Mac are you working on? On my MacBook. From 2012. Look at this bad boy. Mm -mm. 15 inch, 2012, extra added RAM, extra SSD slammed in there, bam, bam. Yeah, it's still doing its thing. But uh, it's very heavy. <laughs> um, okay, so we build this. And so what we can do now is we should be able to copy these files over to the server and it should just work, I think. But then we should be reading here, or here. So I guess we take those releases. Rel just recats releases 0 0.01. I think that's just what we do. Think. I don't know. I don't. I'm really confused. Okay, let me delete my entire. Hold up. Underscore build. And then just rebuild it again, just to know that it's this is just the mix release and not the other one because we also have distillery releases. Okay, so what if I want to run this on another environment? What part do I need to copy over? Ugh. Ugh. Okay. Elixir 1.9 point releases Phoenix. Everyone, get in. Yo, Ender Pearl. Thanks so much for follow. That's such a Minecraft name, man. What is Giga Elixir? Oh god, it sounds spooky as hell. Next server, blah, 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 releases. Okay, import config into releases.dx. 
server true secret key base boom boom mash it in there let's go and then we build it and then gig elixir i don't know what that is but they're using that fucking freaking cool oh that's their goddamn app look at this it's goddamn gig elixir writing a blog post about gig elixir because it's a platform as a service mur, 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 mur. It's cool and all, but I don't want to read about this. I just want to do it manually. I want to do it slam hard, straight up into getting my hands dirty. Straight up. I want to get my hands dirty, man. I don't want to have the pussy shit on a SaaS platform that on a platform as a service that just makes everything easy. I want to get my hands goddamn dirty, boy. No, I don't want to do it on Docker. I don't want to do it manually. Why does nobody do this manually? So they copy, they have the bin. Do I really need that? Can I just not copy over the release? Let's just try it, man. Let's just try it. Okay, so if I were to take the release and I copy it from build, why can I not find anything? Is it not, is it not done? Oh, it's broken. Ah, oh, shit. That's because we deleted the build folder. Oops. Uh, mix steps clean. Oh. Try this again. Let's try this again. This should also do a clean and you should also get everything, but you're not lucky today, no. Oh, we're chilling hard. But, uh... It says it's just a binary, but I don't believe that. If I get this figured out, I'll write an, an entire, I'll make an entire video about this. Because people learn always the right, the right way of doing things and it's pissing me off. I want to do it the dirty way. Why don't people learn how to do it correctly? <laughs> That's actually better, but... I'll, you know, you don't always have to do everything correctly. Sometimes it's better to not do it correctly. Ever thought about that? Ever thought about not doing it correctly? Release. Uh, Elixir. 1.9. Uh, 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 Digital Ocean. Automate deployments. That is not what I want, but it's probably going to explain about how do you do it using Docker, but let's figure it out. Install Elixir and Phoenix on the production server. SSH, blah, blah, blah. Phoenix new, blah, blah, blah. Yep, yep, yep. Cool. Distillery, the pussy way, man. That's just about how I do everything. Not the right way. All right, let's see. We follow the steps outlined here. thank you all right cool mix release start just hangs no output docker blah 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 da, da, da. server true blah 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 we have that already multi-part docker releases no i don't want to have docker releases man i did normal way how did you get started in web development uh honestly um I started with downloading free them HTML CSS templates and then changing them. But I, I think even before that, I started with just slicing in Photoshop and then seeing everything turning into tables. <laughs> that was always fun. And then thinking I was like a sick ass web developer now because I just changed some 
text and then when I changed the text everything would break because it slices oh no it weren't even it wasn't even text it was images that's crazy uh okay so we have this okay now let's copy just the release what's in here prod rel just for cats and then we have releases I think this is what we need to copy. So let's copy it. SCP. We're just going to make a... Uh, like a... Yeah. A folder or something. Called YOLO. Go inside YOLO. And then what we're going to do, we're going to SCP this entire stuff onto the server. How does that work again? SCP. Copy from local to remote. I would do that again. Yeah, yeah, cookies, blah, blah, blah. No, I don't want cookies. How do I even continue? I don't even know. SCP. Okay. SCP dot slash. I want to have a folder though. The entire folder scp copy folder mm -hmm, mm -hmm. dash r dash r i want to copy this to <gasps> to what was our ip again what was our ip this was our ip root at this slash YOLO. YOLO? Does that work? Or do we need a column? I think we need a column. We need a column. That's why we couldn't tab. Oh, now we can tab. See? Look at that. Okay. Dude, go. Copy it. <gasps> Look at me go. Okay, so now on the server, we have a 0 0.01 here. And now, can I? I really don't know what all this shit is, but is there a binary or are we supposed to get the binary? Yeah. Maybe we didn't need this. So maybe we only needed the binary and that was it. Okay, so let's keep this here. Go back. Create another folder called YOLO2 and then just only copy the binary. See how that goes, huh? See how that goes. So bin, copy bin to YOLO2. All right, now we're here. We go into YOLO2, there's a binary, and then we need to start it. How do we do that? Oh, wait, that's service mode, demon mode. Bin release name. Bin Jizra Cats. Start. No file or directory. Oh, wait, we're already in bin. And open release and. So maybe it does need more things. Let's create a YOLO 3. <laughs> We're just trying to figure it out, you know, chat? Come on, don't blame. We're very close to releasing this. Let's copy just for cats as a whole to YOLO 3. See how that's gonna go. That's a lot of files, huh? I liked how Distillery made it a zip file. We could have also made it a zip file ourselves, but... Would have been nice if it did that for us. The YOLO 69 waiting room. <laughs> I 
buy releases code preloading yeah come on all right i still have no idea what i'm doing chat so you guys can shoot at me all you want i have no idea what i'm doing we just started from uh thinking what we're doing to not knowing exactly what we're doing anymore fuck do I boot it up on the server? Do I need the entire build folder? I don't think that's how it works. Okay, we're on YOLO 3 now. It has a Jizzro Cats folder now. And if we now do bin Jizzro Cats start it will tell me that I need a port number. Okay, that's good. Port number is not set. Alright, port 3000. Postgres is not working. Postgres is not working. Postgres is not working. Oh, database does not exist. Okay, that's good. Because. Oh, we need to just create a database real quick. <laughs> so let's uh, log into Postgres again. Uh, what was it called? Uh, uh, sudo. And then. Postgres, post, yeah, this one. And then we, how do we create a database? Create DB, Postgres, I think that's what it is. Create DB. Boom, bow. Boop, down. Create DB. Create DB. Oh, there's no autocomplete. God damn it. Create DB called Jizzrocats prod. Damn it. What do you mean? Oh, is it slash? Slash create DB? I don't know, bro. How do I do this? Create DB demo. That's what I did. Create DB. Just Rockets prod. Enter. Okay, let's just do it. This, this, uh, I don't know. How the fuck does it not work? Uh, I need to check the Phoenix deployment logs because uh, because we have yeah this is cool this is cool they created this migrate rollback repos so I don't have a create. A db create command. Okay. That makes sense though. Why does it not create one though? Set. Create db postgres. Create database from command line. Yes. Create user, test user. I don't care. Create db, test db. Pseudo you Postgres. We're in Postgres now. Do not change directory to blah blah blah. Okay. Syntax error near create DB. Do we need to create a user first? Bob. No, it doesn't matter. I don't think it matters. I can just create a DB using Postgres, right? Create database. Um, what was it? What was it again? Jizzrocats prod. Jizzrocats prod column. Done. List D. Uh, I can't remember D list. DB. Tables. I don't fucking know. Okay, we have the we have the DB now, so I think we can just now start it. And then it will say, er, it needs to run migrations. Er, er. Okay. 
Is it live, boys? It's live! And then when we click on something, it's probably gonna say, click, and an internal server error, because the user table does not exist. So what we need to do is we need to run our migrations, which is somewhere in this thing here, uh, migration, yeah, custom commands. And then we do close the server, break it, yes. And then we do bin, just row cats, eval. And then we do just, just draw cats, release, migrate. Is undefined. I created the module, right? Oh god, wait. Yeah, I created this module. Jizzle Cat's release. Oh, it's this. There you go. Oh! Migrator with repo undefined private. Undefined function error. Shit. God damn it. This is probably some new stuff. God damn it. I didn't test it. I should have tested it before. <laughs> Locally. Mm. Oh, I think this is what we... I think this, this is what we run into last time, too. We didn't actually tackle this last time. But it's nice that we can do that now. Okay, so... Uh, Last time, I think we run the migration somehow. I can't remember how, though. Did we run it in death mode? I can't remember. Anyways. Um, we need to figure out locally. We need to run... Uh, mix. We just need to run exactly what we're doing here. Or mix IEX or something. IEX dash S mix. It's exactly the opposite. Oh, it's compiled for the other thing. Mix steps clean. All mix steps get. Get it for my machine, boy. Take steps, compile. I need to compile it for Mac again. That's why we don't. Sh we shouldn't volume it. We should just copy it. But then we need to rebuild the app every time, the uh, the image every time. Okay, uh, now I can do mix or ix something like this. Okay, so now we have the entire app, and then what if we do here's release uh migrate so it says migrator repo repo with repo yeah that doesn't exist uh
We have some older do documentation. Oh wait, there was some documentation in this this one here, migrations. Um Each repo, start link, pool size 2, run migrations, repo, run migrations 4. What? So run repo migration. Oh, this is a function here. Run migrations 4 repo. Yeah, so this is actually what we should be using. Because we're a little behind. Alright, let's try this. Uh, this is very, very hard though. Like, start apps necessary for executing migration. But are we gonna we're just gonna evol it, right? So re release control eval blah 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 argument. Oof. Tying it all together, release set commands. Bin my app migrate, bin my app seed. Migrate or run. Repo migrations path up. It's already doing run. But then migrate or with repo was like another version. So I think we can just update Acto if it's not too big of an issue. Um... All right, maybe we can maybe we can fix the script, but then we need to change it later. So basically, every repo because we have a couple repositories, migrate versions. Yeah, so I think this was just an helper added to make the thing a little easier. This so will basically that file that they created migrations is basically with repo, and then you can just. Oh no, here it loops over all the repos. Okay. So, loops over all the repos and then... Migrate or with repo. But I think our up command already takes a repo. Runs an up migration on the given repository. Version already up. How am I supposed to know the version? Oh, migration source. Migrator run. Repo migration source. Direction. Apply the migration to a repository with a given strategy. Repo. Migration one. Migration two. It's an array of migrations. Well, when life gives you lemons. Yo. Yeah. No message. Cinder, welcome back to the cats community for 41 centuries. Thank you so much. Okay, maybe it's easier to just update Ecto. I reset like two days ago. What the fuck's going on? What was it? 41 months? I can't remember. Wait, let me check. Um. 
It was 41 months. <laughs> Thanks, man. For 41 months again. Appreciate that. Um. Yeah. I'm kind of confused. Um. I guess I can run the same one that they built here, but this one looks very much more complicated. What version of Ecto are we using? Ecto. 2.2. Where is Ecto? Oh, Ecto is a dependency of Phoenix, huh? Oh, no, Phoenix Ecto. 3.2. Uh, Uh, why is this so difficult? God damn it. Why is this so difficult? Run migrations. Elixir. Did I get hacked or something? No. I got an email saying my sub to you was cancelled. Oh, what? That's weird. That is weird. I'm so confused. Uh... Running migrations. Markdown. Yeah, this is the shitty file that they created, but it's... There's no other approaches that may make more sense. Oh, there are other approaches that may make more sense. Automatically running migrations and pre-start hook. Yeah, yeah. Migrator run repo path path is this. Wait, can I just not just do this? Can I not just run this? This seems a lot easier. Alright, so let's take the path here. And then... Do what it says right here. How did I, how did I get the repo from before? Oh, here. Repo. Path is this. Up all. But that means that it would always run all of them. Not if they are, because what it does here, oh no, it also does all. And then roll back. Okay. Let's try this. Oh, I could have just reloaded the module. Doesn't really matter. Okay, so now if I do, oh. Function migrator run three is undefined or private. Yeah, this one is not, doesn't exist. Yeah. Um, just our cats dot release dot migrate. Unknown my app. Yeah, this is app. Reload. Reload. I can't remember how to reload. H. Uh, Jizzercats dot release dot reload. How do I reload? Reload ix. Ix dot helpers. 
That's very recompile. Okay, maybe it's we're good now. No match on the right hide set side value of empty array. So we're checking for this. Okay, let's just not check. Let's just run it and then we'll figure it out. Uh, reload. Recompile. This is what you get back. Already up. How is my guitar doing? My guitar is doing fine, actually. I'm still uh, playing. Yeah, thanks, Kate. It's kind of working, but uh, I'm a little scared why nobody else does it. Um, and sure, all started. run this in its stop I don't know this yeah this should break I want a pattern match on this but it doesn't really give me any any useful results this will just run and then when condition do and then run all returns takes a repo blah, blah, blah pending in direction and then migrate and then migrate returns an empty array um, right what if, what if it breaks? What if the migration could not be finished? So there's two cases here, up and down, and we're going up. And then do go up, and then it says... Uh, attempt, repo, and then otherwise attempt this one and otherwise we cannot find an upper change okay that makes sense yeah yeah we're going deep into the source though but i want to say like schema migration up it's gonna attempt this and then verbo schema migration which is just a try catch And then it's going to do this up and this is just going to be an insert of repo making the thing doing the thing and then what does this return insert repo okay okay i think i get it so because it's like a raw query that we're doing, probably get like an empty array back. But I don't know what you get back. I think it just throws whenever it's like something crazy. So let's write a migration that is broken as hell. But let's first do exactly what we do here. But then let's create a def p and then call it like path, which will do exactly this. Because otherwise, we're gonna like path this. So we reduce some duplication here. And then over here, we do down. And then not all. 
because we can we can pass it something we can do step two supplied version two version i think this should work yeah i think what did the rollback do before on the actual production thing you pass it a repo oh you pass it a repo okay never mind i don't need this because you already pass it a repo and then the version down to yeah exactly we're doing the same thing so we're good pass it a repo and a version we're good we're good we're good Yeah, this should work. Recompile. And then if we do rollback. We have to pass it a repo. Israelcats.repo. And then we pass it a version, which is zero. And then we just roll back twice. And then we do migrate. And then we roll back again. Okay, that's good. And then now if we create a broken migration. I don't even know if we can do this <laughs> in Elixir, but. Recompile, go up, and then we do migrate, and then it breaks. Cause we true. Okay, that's good. But that's because we threw. Okay, I don't even know. I don't even know how to test this, but anyways, migrate. Did it even break? It's only run one migration, so I was a little scared. Okay, scary, but sure. If the migration fails, it still thinks that the migration is run, so that's a little spooky. Yeah, so I think eventually we'll just upgrade Ecto, but I just want to know if it works. Okay. Oh god. All these mix files are now showing up in my thingies. Okay, let me see. My repo on GitHub. I want to see what I did in the other branch to see what I added to my git ignore secrets oh I didn't push I think but I think it's supposed to do yeah dot mix is not supposed to be in checked in but it is anyhow that doesn't really matter Yeah, so if I were to if I were to create a new app um, okay let's try and release this but then as a new version so we go version um, let's try this let's try this out before we go to bed because it's already 12 so let's Build the app again, but then with a new version. So let's bump the version. Bump the version one one point up. Then we do Docker. This thing, run it. 
So basically rebuilding rebuilding the dependencies for our Ubuntu environment. And then we copy the files again. And then we need to... I don't really know how we do this. I guess you just... Mix, release... Minor... No. So you do re What did you do in distillery when you wanted to... Release a new version? So you release and then boom boom and then version 0.1 version 0.2 change some stuff you deploy oh you can do upgrade Mix release upgrade. I don't really know if this is even in. I suppose it is. Start, install, demon, okay. Yeah, so I, I create a release. I want to see like, how do I, because with distillery, it was kind of cool how you can do dash dash upgrade. And it only bootstraps an upgrade of the app. It doesn't really... What is happening here? Assembling 0 0.02 version of the app. Hot code upgrades, yes. Elixir and Erlang sometimes known for the capabilities of upgrading a node that is running in production without shutting that node shutting down the node. However, this feature is not supported out of the box by Elixir releases. The reason we don't provide hot code updates is because it's very complicated to perform in practice, as they require careful coding of your processes and applications as well as extensive testing. Giving most teams can use the other techniques that are language agnostic to upgrade their systems, such as blue-green deployments, canary deployments, rolling deployments, and other hot and others. Hot upgrades are rarely a viable option. Oh, really? What? No way. In a hot code upgrade, you want to perform you want to update a node from version A to version B. To do so, the first step is to write recipes for every application that changes between those releases, telling exactly how the application changed between those versions. Those recipes are called app ops files. While some of the steps in building app up files can be automated, not all of them can. Oh, interesting. Furthermore, each process in an application needs to be explicitly coded with hot code upgrades in mind. Let's see an example. Imagine your application has a counter process as a gen server. Mm hmm. Yeah. So just okay, and then when you handle a call, it does counter plus one. So gen server is basically a way to. Um, Hold, hold state basically pretty much 
So you're telling it like, hey, this counter is a gen server and you have to implement, I think, start link. I don't think you need to do this. This is like your own thing. And it's like an event. You're calling an event on the gen server, which can handle local state. And you tell it an initial value and then you just call a, f a function on it and then you just handle the call with that with that event basically so you say like okay i called myself with bump and then i handle call and if it's called with bump i um like take the counter which is the current value i think so i think handle call of a gen server takes um Let's see. Uh, oh, handle call. Handle call. So it takes state. Oh, it has multiple. So you can either do reply. Yeah. So the term can be no from and state request from and then state so what are we doing here bump counter oh wait that's the return value hold up no this is the this is the what is from then oh the pid identify the call okay okay i i don't know why so maybe there's another handle call that you can just i don't know anyways so the initial value is you do okay and then you have this diff uh tuple with two and then i think this is a tuple i can't remember I think it is and then it handles bump by an amount so this is variable and then you do counter plus and then max max by okay so sure okay so let's go over this so it, the, this is the initial file and then the you add this process as part of your supervision tree and ship version 0.1.0 .0. Now let's imagine that on 0.2.0 you added two changes instead of bump zero that will always increment the count by one you introduce bump one that passes the exact value to bump the counter yeah the bump bump zero took nothing bump one now takes an argument that's a valid use case you also change the state because you want to store the maximum bump value. Right. So the gen server is now a different initial state. If you perform hot code reload in such application, it would crash because the initial version of the state was just a counter, but the new version of the state is a tuple. Furthermore, you change the format of the call message from bump to bump by, and the process may have both old and new messages temporarily mixed. So we need to handle both. I see. So then we need to make code backwards compatible for a temporary time. Now you can proceed to list this process in the app up file and hot and hot code upgrade it. This this one this is one of the many steps necessary to perform hot code upgrades and it must be taken into account by every process and application being upgraded in the system the app of Co cookbook provides good reference and more examples subcat how's it going oh there it was examples of app up files that typically upgrade and down downgrades down in, in runtime I don't know. I don't know what I was reading there. Once 
Oh, I clicked on something. Once app ups are created, the next step is to create a rel up file with all the necessary instructions necessary to upgrade the release itself. Rel-on documentation does, does provide a chapter on creating and upgrading release uh, a target system. Overall, there's there are many steps, complexities, and assumptions made during hot reloading, hot code upgrades, which ultimately why they're not provided by Elixir out of the box. However, hot code upgrades are still available, can still be achieved by teams who desire to implement those steps on top of mixed release in their projects or separate libraries. Okay. Okay. That's fair. A little sad about that, but it makes a lot of sense now. Good, good. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. It's funny how I didn't get any further at all because all I was doing was replaying basically what I did last time just to get back into it. And then I realized that shit has changed. And then I started learning a lot again on the new releases. Um, hot upgrades are rarely a viable option. Yeah. Blue green develop deployment. Is this like where some of your app is running on one app and then the other version is running on the other? And then you flip the router? Yes, that's what it is. Yeah, this is... I know this, this way of releasing. I think rolling deployments is also kind of similar. Oh god, ads, stop. Scroll down to continue. What kind of evasive fucking ad is that? Jesus. Holy moly. Both nodes running. One is patching down on one node and it's serving on the other node. Yeah, so it's serving things on this server now while this one is patching. And then when this one is done, it serves all the users to that node and then update this one and then both of them again. Canary deployments is just when you deploy. Oh, I don't know how I close this. Oh, here are all the kinds of deployments. Big Bang deployment. <laughs> I think this is this is what I do now. This is you slam a deployment and then you just stop your app for a little bit and then you just boot it back up. Rolling deployment. One app is rolling it, two apps is rolling it, and then done. Blue, green, red, black, or A, B deployment. Yeah, so you just, well, it's kind of similar to this, right? Like you slowly move the load balancer to the other version. All users that are clone idle green both use the same database backend and app configuration. The new version of the application is deployed in green environment and tested for functionality and performance. Once testing results are successful. Okay, so yeah, rolling deployments is what I mostly know. And Canary is like testing it on a few users and the rest is all using the other one. 
And then when it's ready, you just give it to everyone. Hmm. Right. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Anyhow, um, I think that was it for today. Even though it was kind of a, um, a copy of the previous one, we still learned a lot because Elixir has updated <laughs> and then it just basically crashed our distillery. Um, I think, yeah, I don't know if this is, if distillery is still really needed. Maybe, maybe, because you can still do app ups. Because I suppose with Phoenix, it's still possible because you don't really, unless you use gens, yeah, unless you make it more complicated. If you have a simple app, it should probably be fine. I have a fairly simple app. Hmm. <laughs> I'm glad I got to see your stream before it ended. I'm glad I got to see your end before you stream. Yay. Can forward out this again the next time you stream? Yeah, that's true. <sighs> Not entirely sure what I'm gonna do though, but we'll see. Oh, there's a word, the word, a word of caution here too. Comes with a lot of complexity. Are so impressive because of the technical features required to shop out code at runtime. While OTP makes this process quite easy to accomplish, they also expect you to fully understand what you're asked to do. In other words, you need to be very aware of how hot upgrades are performed and how to manage change in your application. Yeah, exactly. This is what they were warning for. And it's funny how here it's like not that important. Like it's just an extra like, oh, oop, yeah, you know, this is this is also here. Make sure to be careful. While here, they actually just like say, OK, this is not going to be part of our. This is not going to be part of Elixir's core release because it's so difficult to do that most people probably don't. Like, it's not worth the complexity versus the the other options that are there. So if you're actually, like, willing to do rolling deployments or, like, something to stay up, it's a lot easier to, to just do that. It saves time and it saves money, basically. Because dev time is more expensive than having another server. Point two. Okay, well... Thank you guys for watching. And uh, yeah. That's pretty much it.